Okay, I just want to give you a, a very basic um, a walkthrough of a quite a simple talk problem. Um, this is probably worth um, somewhere between merit or um, even excellence, depending. So um, the first part here asks you to label the forces acting on the bridge. That's the first part you should always do before you solve any kind of talk problem. And um, you should try and do these um, in proportion as well. So for a start, the one thing, you've, one thing you've always got is the weight of the bridge. So the weight of the bridge is acting at the center of mass, and the center of mass, generally speaking, will be in the middle. So we're going to have here a, um, call that FB, which is the force of the bridge. Um, we've also got, of course, the force of the car acting on the bridge as well. So we're going to label another force here. The car is going to weigh a whole lot less than the bridge, so we're going to make that arrow a bit smaller. So there's the force of the car. We've also got some support forces acting to hold that bridge up. Um, we're going to have a support force on the left and the right, so supports A and B. Um, what we've got here is a larger one on this side. We're actually going to call that F1. And we're going to have a smaller force on the right-hand side, which we can call F2. Now, F2 is smaller than F1 because the car is closer to support F1. All right, so there we go. We've got our, our, all of our forces labelled. The next thing you should do is um, label the distances that are acting um, as well. And keep that in mind. So for a start, we know that um, the entire bridge has a length of 30 metres, which means that the uh, length to the weight is going to be equal to 15 metres. Um, and the car... Um, the car, we don't know that information. What we do know, though, is that the car has a mass of 1,500 kilograms, and the bridge has a mass of 5,000 kilograms. And that's pretty much all we know. Okay, so we're asked to calculate the, um, the value of the support A and B of the bridge when Mike is in his car at a distance of 10 metres from end A. So straight away we have also know that we can um, put in some more information. If the car is 10 metres away from point A, that means that the distance of the car back to here is going to be 20 metres. Alright, the first thing you want to do in order to calculate the supports is um, choose a pivot point. Now I'm going to choose F2 as my pivot point. Now generally speaking, if the exam question asks you to work out support F1, you should choose F2 as your pivot point. If the exam question asks you to, to um, determine F2, you should choose F1 as your pivot point. Now that pivot point is the point where all the torques are going to act around, um, and we're going to start, start from there. Our very first statement um, is going to be the same every time. We know that this particular bridge is in equilibrium, so therefore that means that the torques clockwise must be equal to the torques acting clockwise. That is always your starting point. Now a bit further down the track, the second thing we're going to look at is because, again, it's in equilibrium, that means that the forces acting in the up direction must be equal to the forces acting in the down direction. And those two equations, those two ideas, are going to enable us to work out the value of um, the two support forces, F1 and F2. Next thing you want to do is start working out what your clockwise and anti-clockwise torques are. So we'll start with clockwise. So what you do want to think about here is which forces are going to make that um, bridge want to turn in a clockwise direction around the red X, the pivot point. So looking at that, um, it's actually only one. And that force that will make it want to turn in a clockwise direction is going to be F1. So torque is force times distance, which means the torques clockwise will be F1 times how far away F1 is from the pivot point, which is 30 metres. So essentially we've got, we just write that slightly differently, 30 F1. The torques anti-clockwise, having a look at here, there are actually two forces that are going to make it turn anti-clockwise. We're going to have FB over a distance of um, 15 metres, 
and we're going to have FC, the car, over a distance of 20 metres. So we're going to add those two torques up together. So first of all, we're going to have um, FB times 20 metres, uh, sorry, times 15 metres. And we're adding that to the uh, car, which is FC times 20 metres. Once we've done that, we can actually go a bit further because we actually know that the, what the force of the bridge is. Keeping uh, gravity nice and simple at 10, um, the force of the bridge, mass times gravity, would be 5,000 times 10, and then we'll get our 15. Plus our car, which is going to be uh, 1,500 times 10, and then we're also multiplying that by 20. Now what you want to do at this point is you want to work out what that whole thing is. Um, so you go and grab your calculator and work it out. So we've got here 5,000 times 10 times 15 and we're going to add that to 1,500 times 10 times 20. So we get an answer there of uh, 1050. Oh, 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 Newton meters. So that's the value of our uh, anti-clockwise torques, and over here 30 F1 is the value of our clockwise torques. Now we know in fact that um, the torques clockwise must be equal to the torques anti-clockwise, which means that 30 F1 must be equal to 1050000. So here's our equation. You can see very quickly that we can very easily solve for F1. F1 will be 1050000 divided by 30, back to your calculator, divide that answer by 30, and we get 35,000 newtons. So our F1 has a value of 35,000 newtons. Next part's really easy, we want to work out F2, and that's where we come to the idea that all of the forces acting in the up direction have to equal all the forces in the down direction. What that means is, is that the forces in the up direction, the support forces, have to equal all the forces in the down direction, which is the force of the car plus the force of the bridge. Looking at that, um, that means that our F1, which we know, 35,000 plus F2, is the car. So the car, just to remind myself, the car is 1,500 times 10, so 15,000 as a force. And the bridge, uh, looking at this, was 5,000. But multiply by gravity, get you 50,000. Which means that F2, if we just rearrange that, is going to be equal to 15,000 plus 5, uh, 50,000, take away 35 thousand. So F2, back to your calculator. So we've got 15,000 plus 50,000 and we want to take away 35,000 giving us 30,000 newtons as our force. So 30,000 newtons is the value of F2. Okay, as a quick check um, it's always good to make sure that it makes sense. So um, straight away I know that F1 should be greater than F2 because F1 is taking more of the uh, support, more of the weight because the car is closer to F1. And looking at that, you can see that we've got 35,000 newtons for um, F1 and we've got 30,000 newtons for F2. So that checks out quite nicely. As I said, that problem there, probably worth um, anything between a high merit to a low excellence. And that's it.